Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So it came time to paint up my Terminator Captain from Leviathan and I was thinking, wow, this model has grown. But I didn't really have a frame of reference to show exactly how much it's grown. So I thought it'd be a bit of fun. Jumped on eBay, picked up an old Terminator Captain in metal from the year 2000s. Not in the best of condition, needs a bit of rescuing. Covered in scrapes and scuffs and scratches where it looks like someone's tried to scrape the paint off or undo it the proper way. So rescuing the model to start with is stage one. Then we'll get him built up and we'll paint alongside the new plastic Terminator Captain versus the old metal. So first things first is get rid of the paint. So drop it into a pot, quick bit of methylated spirits to cover the whole model, leave it for an hour or so, do it in a well ventilated area or put a lid on. When it comes to getting the paint off, a soft brush, old toothbrush like this, and gently rub that paint off. I'm doing it directly onto my hobby mat, which is fine, just make sure again, well ventilated area. And at the end of it, just make sure you clean that up thoroughly off your painting table and off your fingers, because you don't want to be putting it on the model and taking paint off accidentally. Then I thought it would be a good idea put the new um, Terminator Captain for doing a side by side. I put the old one onto a new sized base. It did make the model look even smaller than it actually is. And then fill in that gap where there was originally a back banner um, on there, which was something very kind of 80s, 90s, early 2000s, all the models had. Sprayed up with lead belcher and then started the paint scheme. And initially, you can see the size difference between these two models. It is quite dramatic. One dramatic thing I noticed instantly testing out a couple of new painting handles, um, sticking these models onto the painting handles was actually quite difficult to get the metal model to hold on. The weight difference is substantial, and you don't understand the difference that makes painting a model to your experience of sounds silly, but holding that heavier model at a slight angle can prove a little bit difficult. And you'll see in the early stages here, quite often I'm actually putting my thumb onto that base to make sure it's stable and not going to sort of fall off um, the actual handle. So that's the first big difference. The other one is physically holding the model. If these weren't on painting handles, I did actually hold the model a couple of times when it sort of fell off and I tried to catch it. And you find you can scuff paint off a metal model an awful lot easier than plastic. So something you almost forget when you're painting the new plastic models, how much better the paint will stick to a plastic model than a metal. So that's one part of that evolution of the workshop hobby you almost don't realise and you do come to paint models differently. Now I'm not going to go through the exact painting scheme doing this, it's going to be a ramble more about the different experience of painting the two. If you do want to know my Deathwing painting scheme, I'll drop a link down below to the recent video I've done on the Deathwing. This one's going to be more about just really nattering about the changing models that I've noticed. The very, very first part I did was doing the metal uh, on the kind of shins, on the eagle, on the old metal terminator, and the sort of crux terminatus and the new one. And you'll notice when painting any kind of detail area, on the new models it's very, very clinical. So you can see it's been CAD designed, you know, one side of the Crux Terminatus is identical to the other, all the slashes and rivets and whatever on the new model you can tell are all identical across the model. On the old model you don't get that. You will see that you've, you can almost see the sculpting tool marks in you know, the Eagles in the Crux Terminator and whatever, and if one line on one part of the model is slightly different size to the other, that is because the sculptor has made that mistake as they're going, and that's then been replicated in the casting process, etc. Painting the bolt gun here, you'll see, or Storm Bolter, the kind of skulls on the hands of the new Terminator are identical on both sides of the model. They're not on the old metal one. Now, it gives a certain charm to the metal model, but sometimes the accuracy is nicer. Uh, on the newer models, talking about weapons, and we're talking about the growth of these models. One thing that did surprise me is that the weapons are actually very, very similarly sized. And when you put these two models together, and you'll see in the shots at the end, the Storm Bolter has only grown by, I would say, maybe 10%. Um, the ammo feed is definitely a lot bigger. And the sword, I would say the same thing. It's grown a bit, but it's not grown substantially. A couple of millimetres on the end of the sword, so maybe a 10% growth, whereas the rest of the model has definitely expanded dramatically. Painting the, the cloaks here is another point of interest. You look at the old cloak and you can see that's been done by a human who's taken the thing of this is where I think a cloak will fall, put loads and loads of folds in that cloak, loads of you know catchment areas, whatever. Whereas the new one, sort of more CAD designed, more flowing, more open panels. Uh, so it's just a bit different. Now, the open panel thing I actually found that's another really big thing that jumped in my head how much more difficult it is in a way to paint the big open flat areas on the new Terminator Captain, especially when you come to like the leg area, the left leg, I notice there's a big vast area of empty space, and that can prove tricky, especially with my techniques of paint, then wash, then paint, to make the paint look almost smooth on that big panel and make it look good. The older model, lots of smaller panels broken up by lots of other bits of detail, very much more ornate model, and you look at the 
old versus new. The new model's got just as many ornate areas on it, but it's spread out over a much larger area. So just found, particularly on the initial um, kind of initial layers of paint, almost more difficult to paint the larger model because there's bigger areas, but in another way, easier because you're not catching all those little bits of detail. You're not having to dig into little crannies and nooks like you see me do here. You've got just big areas and some manoeuvre in it. So I did find I was having to hold the older model upside down at jaunty angles a bit more than the new one. So a different painting experience almost. Now when it came to the wash stage, which obviously we've already um, about to come into, doing washes on these models again was a very different prospect. The new model, the washes kind of flow off those flat panels, that's that area, makes it so difficult in a way. Um, doesn't have too many places to settle. You have to go back around the model and just check it's not pooling in too many areas, but there's not too many places really where it causes a problem because those catchment areas are quite large, quite deep. Around the head area there, there's lots of space where that wash can go, so you're not really gonna mess it up too much. When you drop onto the smaller Terminator, if you put too much wash around that face area, you're gonna make a real mess around the kind of side of the head because the head is very much almost touching those armor panels. So really got to be a bit more careful how to apply the wash and change it. Talking about heads and look at shoulder panels here, um, the sort of biology of the two different models. Now, obviously 40K is not accurate, it's never going to be, but the smaller model, his head is below the level of where his shoulders are. With the newer one, there's a bit more biological sort of awareness with the newer models where they're trying to make it look a little bit more realistic. Never gonna be obviously fully realistic, but that was definitely a thing in the old models where it was a person just sculpting what looked cool. Uh, you can see with the new CAD design, there's a little bit more thought about where something would actually have to go to make someone be able to move. It almost feels like they're trying to pay a little bit of service towards that, but not in full. One thing that was quite apparent is the new models are not completely free of mistakes. When I was putting the transfers on or whatever, particularly on the right hand shoulder, I didn't get it quite central when you compare it to where the nameplate is, but I did centralise it on the curve of the panel. Maybe I made a mistake, maybe I didn't, don't know. Neither model's perfect, I would say, but it's a really sort of fascinating progression of how these models paint up together over 20 years. Um, really liked both paint schemes, really enjoyed doing this side-by-side -side comparison and realizing how the actual act of painting a model has changed just as much as the actual models themselves. I'm sure I've missed lots of points. Hopefully if you've got some more points you want to add, drop them down below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in another video.